We're normally here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. So you might not have thought so if you listened to our last episode. So going into the holiday sale season, Sean and Deanna both tried to convince me to cancel our usual podcast recordings so that we could focus on the deals. And I'll admit it, they were right. In my head, though, I was thinking about it, and I'm like, you know what, last week, right? So last Wednesday, you're like, it's Wednesday, it's the day before American Thanksgiving. The big sales don't tend to hit until actual Thanksgiving Day, most on Friday, unless they're live already, right? So people either launch them on like November 1st or a couple weeks before, or they wait till Thanksgiving at like 6 p.m., or the later. So I kind of figured Wednesday wouldn't be that big a deal. And I'm like, oh, you know what? Wednesday will be fine. I can record. We won't be that busy. And then this week, I was like, well, by Wednesday, Cyber Monday is done. That's like two days ago. And we should know about any Cyber Week sales or any sales that are still going. And we should have no problem getting ready for an episode this week. But dear listener, as you will have already likely assumed, this was not the case. Now, what I didn't count on is how exhausted we would be and how messed up our sleep schedules would get. Uh, with Amazon sales hitting at 3 a.m. Eastern every night, and making sure we are up and ready to go at that time every day for the last week or so has really taken its toll. And I do apologize for that. But hey, you folks obviously like hearing our voices, so more is better, right? Uh, right? Right. Even if mine sounds like I might be falling asleep, the, the coffee is fueling it right now. So I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I probably should have got a refill. Now, I will say on a positive note, so far it was all worth it. Um, This is our busiest time of the year for a reason, as most of our income still does come from affiliate links. Would love some more Patreon patrons and other support and sponsorships to offset that. But for now, we're still mostly on Amazon, or not Amazon, affiliates is, is what pays the bills and keeps us happy. So I will say that we did a good job promoting them this year. In addition to record sales on Amazon compared to last year, we managed to get, um, we're now affiliates with a couple more companies like the Op and Haba, as well as Unidragon, which makes some really cool puzzles, as well as some other sites. And we saw sales on all of those. Like we could see it every day, right? We're like, oh, cool. We actually got sales on the Op and Haba. So it wasn't a waste or effort. In addition, whoa, we smashed stuff. In addition, we also had some record number of views on the blog when compared to the same time last year. So all this exhaustion seems like it was worth it, though I'm still not sure I should be here recording now and not either sharing more deals and keeping up with what's still live or unboxing some games and getting content ready because that's the one thing that has fallen behind. All we've done since last week is record another podcast or getting playing games, relaxing, maybe going to play Wii, finally uh, trying out the new Animal Crossing thing, maybe sleeping. Sleeping probably would have been good. Probably and due to, the fact, due to the fact that there was little to no time to actually prep for this episode, <laughs> we decided that we would take an easy way out tonight and just host an AMA where we will answer questions from the awesome folk here live in our chat room. Yeah, we wanted to be here for you and record something. So at this point, I think next November, we are probably going to take at least a couple weeks off, if not the entire month. There are plenty of shows that take whole months or more off. So I don't think that a short break is a deal breaker for us, especially not if we can have some content to dribble out on YouTube. Yeah, though that's something we didn't do this year. We managed to go live, but we didn't really put anything else. See, Deanna's saying that's what we said last year. Last year, we took three weeks off. We took a full three weeks off last year. Yeah, now, we're sick. <laughs> yeah, we still took three weeks off. <laughs> now, as usual, for one of these AMA shows, for those of you awesome lobbyists here in our chat room on Twitch, feel free to ask anything gaming or non-gaming related. You can ask me, you can ask Sean, you can ask both of us. It doesn't really matter. Now, to give everyone in the chat room some time to think and come up with some questions, I do have one topic, one thing I want to talk about to get us started. Now, our good friend Dyson Logos, uh, Canadian map maker extraordinaire, the Hatchmaster, has decided to launch his own gaming prompt thing. Like, you know, like, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the, the I don't want to name the one that we shouldn't name anymore. Yeah, they changed, uh, they changed that because no one talks about, calls it that anymore. Yeah, and I can't remember what they changed it to. But, you know, like, like the every day of the week, you do, there was RPG a day, I know was one of them. And some of the other ones that have been done where it's just, you know, a a prompt every day to do something in the month of December. 
And the one he's done is he is calling it Dice Ember instead of December. D I C E. So Dice Ember. So with one E. So Dice Ember for this month. Now, in Dyson's own words, the hashtag December 2021 challenge is to produce something dicey RPG dice game related each day of December and release it with the December hashtag or December 2021 tag. This can be a blog or social media post, a drawing of something RPG related, a drawing or photograph of actual dice, a random table or die drop table for us to chuck dice on, etc. The field is wide open. Make it dice related, and honestly, decide for yourself whether you're following the prompts or doing your own thing. We're cool with it either way. Dice on. So you can find the prompts and more info at www.dysonlogos, that's D Y S O N L O G O S, one word, dot com forward slash December, D I C E M B E R. So what I thought we would do to start things off, well, everyone in the chat room can start firing off questions for us to answer after this, is start, do the first prompt. Now, I doubt we're going to take part in December every day. Uh, I don't think we'll do more than the one prompt, but maybe on our Sunday, um, if we start getting back to our Sunday brunch, which we should, uh, maybe we'll do a few of these on Sundays or do a week's worth on Sundays. So I don't know how mel how well I'd be able to tie them in the dice without like taking pictures of dice or <laughs> chucking some dice to do something. But as as a podcast topic, we'll see how they go. So the number one right now is ammo. Now, Sean, supers must have ammo rules. Like uh, all all the supers games you've read, they're modern, right? No modern game doesn't have guns. There's got to be some kind of ammo rules in supers. Well, games. you know what. Here we go. So we're going to go with the Mutant and Masterminds Deluxe Rulebook, right? The crunchiest superhero book out there. Okay. Don't use ammo unless it's narratively important. Done. That's it. Nice. That's it. Uh, that I went through a stack of superhero books. Not one of them mentions the use of, the tracking of, or anything of ammo. Wow, it was I'm actually, actually kind of surprised. It was actually kind of relieving. Uh, <laughs> it was nice. Nobody cared. I actually had to go back to the my old Warhammer fantasy book to start looking at, at actual stuff of ammo. And even that doesn't talk too much. It talks about what, what, what ammo is being used, but it doesn't yeah. even really talk about tracking your ammo or, you know, anything like that. Uh, the closest it's got is it's got a D8 roll if you throw anything explosive. The, yep. which gives you your cardinal directions for which way it's exploding in when things go boom. I'm starting to shocked at the superhero RPGs, like even the crunchy ones. Yeah, no, didn't they're, have they're tracking of ammo. No. Who, what, what happens if someone plays the Punisher? Come on. You reload off screen. Yeah. Unless it's narratively important. Yeah. Superheroes don't deal with ammo. That's just, that, that's, that's, that's a superhero trope, right? That's a, you yeah. know, unlimited, unlimited ammo. You're reloading off screen. That is kind of interesting. So, <laughs> so one of my favorite rules, so so overall, tracking ammo, it all depends if you should do it or not on the system you're running it. If your game is about scarcity and survival with resource management being an important part of it, ammo matters, right? If you're doing a Walking Dead zombie game, post-apocalyptic or Dark Sun in D&D, that's when I think that really matters. When having ammo, all that matters is that your character stops at the store now and then to stock up. I really don't think it matters. Yeah, I'm just randomly, I realized Hack the Planet, which is forged in the dark, may yep. have, oh, may have an ammo rule. I don't, I, I totally forgotten about uh, so, that. So now the topic is dice as well. So what I mm -hmm. wanted to mention is one of my favorite ammo systems is a die-based one where you roll a die and i've seen it done different ways so one of the ways is when you roll your damage die if you low roll the lowest possible result actually i've seen it highest possible result too you're then out of ammo for your next shot so you get that shot off and if you roll a one out of on your d10 for damage or if you roll a 10 depending on the system you're now out of ammo and in most of those games you then have to either tick off an ammo box or spend some kind of action to, to, to reload so it gives you a little pause in the combat so there's always that chance and then the silly part about that where i don't like is the damage on the gun sets how frequent you might run out of ammo 
which may or may not work. Like if that takes some design work to make that seem semi-realistic. I, I think one of my favorite things when I was going through the old Warhammer rules that I'd forgotten about is you are allowed to walk around with loaded bows or crossbows yep. without penalty. Yeah, in fact, that's, it's that's an, an easy advantage. thing to do. You're expected to <laughs> declare that you are walking around with your missile weapons reloaded in order to save yourself a round of combat. <laughs> that just i, I gotta assume that doesn't mean drawn bow you've just like got the arrow in your I, hand you're ready yes, to go but still who's walking down a path with an arrow knocked and ready yeah uh, not to mention that crossbows aren't exactly the most reliable weapons in the world and you're more well, likely yeah. to kill a kill one of your uh co-conspirators so the other system that i like a little bit better than this is where you roll an ammo die in addition to shooting so you roll your damage as normal, but there's an additional ammo die of some type. And if it comes up with a set number, then you have to reload or you have to spend an ammo. Um, I really dig that better because then it's the, the odds are, are you can change the odds better, right? So you don't have it that because your pistol does D6 damage, it's going to run out of ammo more often than your machine gun that does 10. Although those particular ones probably do make sense. But <laughs> maybe you roll D100 or something. So I kind of dig that. And dice-based ammo, I've always liked the random chance you will run out of ammo. As a DM, I think that mixes your simulationist with your narrative because you never know if you're going to run out and it can happen at dramatic moments. So you get that narrative story, oh my God, I'm out of ammo and I wasn't expecting it without having to go for, and you still get the simulationist that you do run out of ammo. You don't just have infinite amounts without getting into the, excel tracking yeah it's except it's interesting though because uh depending on the character and again this is going to depend a lot on what your character is and who your character is um there are a number of characters and 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 personality types that know how many bullets are in their gun yeah and know how many times they shot right Mm -hmm. you've got the the deadpool scene on the on the expressway right where he's counting Mm -hmm. off the shots as he goes and he knows exactly how many bullets he's got and that's you know even in a massive gunfight, that's reasonably expected. So running out yeah. of ammo, now you can have a jam. That's a different thing. So if you're, yeah, if you're they're considering the a same, jam, yeah. that's one thing. But running out of ammo, I mean, unless you're wild firing or you are specifically the kind who outright doesn't care. You know, I, I am. Right. I, I declare that I am not paying attention to my <laughs> ammo. Um, it's, it's pretty hard. I mean, like, you know, if you've got a revolver, you've got six shots, right? If you've yeah. got a, uh, you know... A, a, a normal magazine on a nine millimeter you're gonna have like 10 or 12 shots if you've got a shotgun you may, may only have two uh yeah. you know one per barrel you have to reload every time and, and you know things like that become easier so at that point it's kind of weird to use the dice and, and it really almost needs to be again in some ways these superhero games are doing it right if yeah. it's narratively important mm-hmm. to have run to run out of ammo run out of ammo or 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 have or have the option to run out of ammo then right maybe you know roll the dice if it's narratively important but rolling Mm. every time you take a shot mm. it's one of those it's it's a it's the the you're probably it's for people who do what i do and i tend to encourage everyone to do where you roll your attack roll and your damage roll at once right so you're rolling everything at once you're why not throw another die in right if you're already doing that it's not going to hurt that way you need that extra die to know if you missed Right. The other one I do like with the the system where your damage roll, you only actually can run out of ammo after you hit, which I think is a good way to do it for um for a game because it, it you're getting your reward. You hit, you did damage, but now you're out. So as opposed to your gun jams, you get nothing. In our chat, uh, Red Ketchup FBI has just posted a link to Bullet Dice on yep. Etsy, and these would be a great way to track ammo on in like an old separate. Western. Yep. Uh, it's like an old Western thing, either or either track it or you or roll to jam or whatever. But if right. I was playing a Western game, I would love to have these little, you know, dice bullet, nice. bullet dice. They're nice. Thanks for that link. Uh, oh, red, thanks, ketchup. red ketchup FBI. All right. Uh, so next up, we have a couple of chats. Uh, well, we get, you know what? We do have one question in the chat. So we'll go to that first. Pax, okay. Pax has joined us in the chat and asked uh, for an inside peek at the deals factory. Uh, now you mentioned having to get up early. What is it you mm-hmm. use to find and track deals uh, on the site? They were impressed to see these stealth, unadvertised deals that only show up when you add to cart. 
how do you go about finding those? Uh, they don't want to give. They don't want you to give away your trade secrets. But you know, I, I think a lot of people don't understand how much effort you indeed yeah. put into these sales. So the one thing I will not be doing is giving away the trade secrets <laughs> because that's the value add that we know how to do this. So I have been doing the deal sharing thing ooh, since I started at TDS, like years. But, and and as something that we did as like extra income. And at, at the time, what it was, was Deanna was like, all right, we, we don't have enough money for groceries. You got to stop buying games, basically. And I'm like, well, how about we have a rule where anything I make from gaming gets reinvested into more games? And then when, it, so if I sold the game, that money went into the gaming budget. And well, that's when I started discovering affiliate sales. So I would sit there and share affiliate links just as something to do to make some extra money to uh, fund the, the hobby or the addiction as, as the case may be. This is before I used to get review copies or anything like that, right? And obviously, well, before I started doing this as a living. So it was something I would do where I'd get home from work and I'd spend a couple hours. And it just gets to be some of it is the fact that you get used to knowing what to look for. And the one thing I will say, and Deanna's already pointed this out in the chat, is it is 100% manual. We do not use any bots to post anything or to find anything. Now, there are things out there. There's something called an API. I don't even remember what API stands for, but it's when you use code to call info from a different website. And most places that share deals online use an API to pull the deals. The thing is, over the years, we've learned the APIs are terrible. Like besides the fact they will, one of the biggest ones for Amazon in particular is they ignore shipping. So you'll get the sales as 97% off, but then the item has $50 shipping. The other thing APIs miss are any actual sales. So if there's a coupon or a buy two, get one free, the APIs miss that. They also rep uh, report the percent off based on whatever, whoever inputted some MSRP somewhere down the line, and they're often not right. So most of that just comes from experience. And what it literally is, is Deanna and I going to specific websites and looking for things. Now, I will admit, Deanna knows some search code that she can put in on Amazon to show everything marked 40% off or more, for example. And still, though, it takes a real person to sit there and find out, like to, to notice, to know what's different, what's a wrong MSRP, what's this. Now, there are other sites out there that do provide something. So, for example, the one, I, I don't think I'm giving away a secret if I mention Camel, Camel, Camel. Three times camel is the biggest site for checking price history on Amazon. And it's what everyone uses. So anytime you see someone online saying, this is the lowest price ever according to camel, camel, camel. Again, it makes mistakes. Camel, 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 again, doesn't take into account um, coupons or buy two, get one free or 10% off or any of that. They just give you your basic, like the, the, the things we always say at, and an additional. Right, so you'll have like whatever uh, Carcassonne was forty four percent off, and then there's something that adds an additional. That's that stacking info that's not there. Now added to that is um, knowing the MSRPs on games just from doing this. Right, the, the experience of having done this for years, um, Deanna mess mainly for the last three years, just getting to know what the MSRPs of games are. And then another trick, and I'll give you this trick right now that I don't think is spoiling anything is when you see that something with a dumb price, it's probably a wrong MSRP. When something is 1813, you probably are looking at a wrong MSRP on Amazon. Now you still have to do the research to find out what the right MSRP is. But then when you see something that's 45.99, it's probably the right MSRP. But when you see 45.28, you're like, well, wait a minute. That's kind of weird. That's probably not the MSRP for this game. And you just get used to what price point things are at. Like small box games are in, you know, the 15 to 20 range. And then your giant ticket to ride games tend to be about 60 bucks. And then when you see one of those for only 30, you're like, wait a minute, why is that only 30 bucks? And sometimes it's a deal, sometimes it's not. Um, going to multiple different sites, doing the research. Um, we spend hours on it. It's, it's, we do not make $15 an hour. We do not make uh, the minimum wage everyone claims everyone should make doing this. Unfortunately, we spend way too much time on it for the, the return, but it does let us do this for a living. So it seems worth it overall. 
Uh, knockoffs aren't as much of a problem because they are not sharing the same bins anymore in no. the Amazon warehouses. No, no. It, it, uh, the only problem with that is that it, they've already convinced, everyone's convinced Amazon is doing that. So Amazon trot stopped. So they, they used to have a process where every copy of 13th Age that comes in gets put on the same pallet in the same spot in the warehouse. And when someone orders a copy of 13th Age, they go to that spot and they take the one off the top. The problem was counterfeiters knew this and were taking advantage of it. So they were selling copies of 13th Age to Amazon at bargain basement prices because they weren't legit. And they were getting mixed in with the legit copies from Pelgrane Press. And that was a huge issue. So that has stopped. Now everything is palleted by source instead of by item. So that should never happen. And if it does happen, it's from a specific seller. And when it happens, you can then report that seller. And the big thing we have told everyone to do is you have to check who is selling the item. In general, on Amazon, you probably 99% of the time want sold by and shipped by Amazon. But there are reputable sellers out there. For example, um, uh, one of the big sites, I'm drawing a blank right now. It's not somewhere we have an affiliate for. It's Card House or one of the big ones. Deanna will correct me. One of the big online game stores sells direct through Amazon. And, but their name is something like Wonderful Toys. Like, it's weird. As I said, she'll correct me on what it is. So whenever you do, it's Miniature Market. Yes, there you go. So it's Miniature Market, which is, is one of the biggest online game stores. Sells through Amazon, but under a weird name that's not Miniature Market. So the big thing with that is doing research on your third-party sellers. We will not, as, as long as we catch it, we will not share a sale from a third-party seller that doesn't have a 95% feedback rating or better and have enough reviews to make that valid. Similar, like to, 100. Yeah. Similar to shopping on eBay, right? Yes. If, they, if, if their rating isn't perfect, there are probably some serious red questions. Yeah, one deal outlet Canada, probably not. Sometimes 91, <laughs> but yeah, in general, 95, I don't dig deep. If it's 91, I start looking at reviews and trying yeah. to see what's better. Now, one of the things that I, you know, I've, I've sat down and watched, I don't take part in this affiliate thing. This is, no. this is Mo, Mo and D's thing, but I've been there, uh, you know, during some sales or in the mornings when we're all sitting around having their coffee and they're just doing their, their more morning scan through. Uh, and, and you really, you cannot automate the, the digging for deals. It doesn't work no. as, as all these other sites who try to do it programmatically have proven. Uh, yeah, you get some stuff, but you get wrong stuff and you don't get anywhere near all of it. Uh, what I wish we could afford to do uh, is, you know, if the patrons ever get high enough is hire a, a Fiverr coder to automate or find a, you know, find a subscription service or something to automate the sharing of the deals, yeah. because that takes up an inordinate amount of time just sharing oh. to everywhere. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of different socials out there and, they, they all need to be represented from board game geek to RPG geek to Twitter, to Facebook, to every other social media site that has pl proliferated since the descent of G plus. <laughs> yeah, there are a ton of them. We, and there are some we share on some we don't and trying to share it is a lot of time. I do use tweet deck to automate the tweets, which I always post something in it. TGD repost, uh, for people because supposedly there's strange people out there on Twitter who actually like, click on a username and scroll back instead of just showing up to see what's going on. Um, so that's an issue. Uh, another thing that does take a lot of time is generating those affiliate codes. Now, Amazon has this nice thing called a site stripe at the top and you just click a button to generate a link. But like we are affiliates at, for anyone on our discord, we have a full list. There's, there's 60 stores roughly that we have affiliates with, but we don't also, we don't just share affiliate deals. There are a couple good sites out there for showing you the lowest price online. And often I will look up a game and then if it's cheaper somewhere, we don't have affiliate, I'll still share. It usually has to be a pretty good deal for me to do that. <laughs> uh, if you just check out our black Friday landing page, that's live right now. I 10% of the stores are affiliates, maybe 20% are affiliates where the rest aren't. Now, the other thing I will also try to do is sometimes depending on how busy we are, I'll try to interject a little more info. Like, hey, this is our favorite two-player game, or we really dig this one, or something like that, or oh, I've never seen it this cheap. That sometimes happens, sometimes doesn't. It's just it's more time and more work. Where usually I save that for when I'm like, no, that's a good deal. Look at this one. 
and it's a way to kind of highlight them. I know we do not use a, a website or sorry, a, a spreadsheet to track prices ourselves. And honestly, we use Camel Camel. I just know that it's not true. Like I know it's not <laughs> perfect, but it's the easiest way to look up prices. But often people will say this and I just know that this has been cheaper. This has been more like, again, it's experience. It's we've been doing this now full time for what, three years now. And I was doing it part time for way longer, like like going back like 2002 or whatever. And yes, there is there is back end secret stuff. Um, yeah, no, it's it's there's there's again, a lot of it really is the fact that it is hand maintained. Yeah. Um, it's it's. You, you can't avoid that to get all the deals um, with, you know, no matter how good your API is, there are definitely things that it's just impossible to find with the stacking of coupons and mm -hmm. two for one combination deals and things like that. Yeah. A lot of it's again, knowledge of the market, knowledge of usual game prices, different publishers, knowing what's Asmodee because Asmodee has something called a map, which is your minimized advertised purchase price which is the lowest an online store is allowed to advertise they're selling a game for, which is why you see so many games that say add to cart to see price, but also why you don't tend to get deals on those big fantasy flight games until they've been out for a while. So it ends up their, their most recent map actually has like an expiry date that after certain games have been out certain long, it's gone. It used to be all their games across the board, but knowing what games are under the map so that when I open up Amazon and I see um mansions of madness for 22 percent off even though we usually don't share anything unless it's 35 percent off or more i know that one breaks the map but it's knowing what games are at asmodee we literally downloaded a spreadsheet at one point of a list of all asmodee games of what's under the map and what's not um we probably should get a new version of that because it's been a while but that is what we use to see if it's a map breaker and when it is i usually like to show that it, hey it's a map breaker and and D points out that this and this is important. Amazon doesn't allow their affiliates to list exact prices. That's unless no. it's on um like social media, because social media is considered ephemeral and temporary. Right. You can't show it on a blog post or an email. Actually, we can't even put affiliate links in our email. Or else the people who do uh patronize tabletop gaming deals and possibly bellhop we'd be throwing links in there we'd be like oh my god go buy this right now we can't we, that is against the rules and no we can't show the exact percent off or the price unless it's on that the ephemeral media the media that it is expected to go out of date on its own blog posts we cannot unfortunately i wish we could because it is really annoying i would love to tell you the exact price of every item yep. on sale for black friday it would probably get us more sales well, absolutely. And, and you see people commenting on, you know, well, what, what's the and just and then other people jumping in saying, well, you can't. Right. It's yeah. a, like the board on the board game geek threads and things like that. Where's the price? I'm like, well, we're not allowed to do that because yeah. this is a forum. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and, and I had people try to accuse us of trying to be shady that we're just trying to get the clicks. And I'm like, why, why would we do this? A lot why of people don't understand affiliate links like everyone is 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 angry when they see affiliate links yeah, and i don't like, understand oh, why um it, it there's no they don't understand that affiliate links does not raise the price of anything no um it's it's amazon paying people to bring advertise for to them. advertise it's 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 an advertising cost for amazon not an extra cost other than every advertising cost is tacked on every price but that's a different issue um, mm -hmm. if they weren't advertising through affiliates, they'd be advertising some other way. It's yeah. not like they wouldn't be spending their advertising budget. Um, so again, ad affiliates are paid by the advertising budget, not by a markup on the price. And I wish more people would understand oh. that basic concept like, because there, there they really is don't. absolute hatred and vitriol for anyone who uses affiliate links. And I don't get it. Yeah. It gets directed at us now and then. And I'm Reddit, like, Reddit and board game geek, especially like a lot of the forum troll people are really, um, yeah, they're really harsh about know. that. I really don't know what it is. Oh, that's a good timing Nightbot. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of funny. I don't know. I keep thinking it was a scam. But still, yeah, like it's there's no scam. It's advertising budget. We still get it. There was a recent thread on Board Game Geek where someone was like, "You're obfuscating the prices to try to generate clicks." And I'm no. like, "I don't get anything for a click." 
you just want that cookie. And I'm like, okay. And people who go out of their way where I'll share it. And they're like, well, here's a non-affiliate link. I'm like, what? We did the work. Like this takes time. Yep. It's not like there's a, like, it, like I get it when there's an Amazon landing page, right? Black Friday, we had to make sure we were value at it. Cause if you just wanted the Black Friday deals on Amazon, all you had to do was click on the Black Friday and click on toys and games. And there it is, right? There, there there's the toys and games. Yeah, so Pac's saying traffic is light, but I'm not giving myself traffic. I'm giving Amazon traffic. It's not a click to our site, right? Yeah. That's what I'm saying with the affiliate link. Clicks to our site, yes, that's totally different. But I've had people upset that I didn't disclose that the page I'm linking to has affiliate links on it, which you don't have to disclose. You just have to disclose if there's an affiliate link that you're sharing. So I have people who get upset when I'm like, here, go check out our webpage. Like, oh, your webpage has affiliate links. You didn't disclose. I'm like, yes, I did. It's right at the top of the page. Like, yeah, but you didn't disclose here on Facebook that I was going to go to a site that has affiliate links, even though we tell you once you get there. And I'm like, <laughs> why? Why are people so yeah, upset about it? Like, like what? What? how are we scamming you? Let, let me, and like, let's point out the fact that this was done on Facebook where you're getting Yes, there's that too. <laughs> I, I'm not even gonna. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna ding myself out there. But uh, if you're on Facebook, you got way bigger things to worry about than going to somebody's page with an affiliate link on it. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. People get really upset about it, and I don't get it. And and compared to some other places that provide board game deals, I feel ours is much more value added than just pulling a bunch of crap from an API. Yep. that is you click through half of the links and they don't even match what it showed on the site because it hasn't updated in a week and all the other problems with all of the sites that pull from APIs. I get it. It's 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 sit back and relax income for them. And yep. in some ways, I kind of wish we had that. I'd, like if, if I knew more about coding an API, I'd be tempted to do both, right? I'd have here, here are all the deals and here's our, our I would curated list. Yeah. Part of the problem with APIs again is that there's limits to them, right? So you can't you can't just constantly check the API. You can't yes. constantly be hitting it over and over again. Oh, it's true. You'll and have it some sort of limit if you yeah. well for free, you're only allowed, I think it's a thousand pulls a day. Right. Which honestly is not, not a lot. Much. It really isn't a lot. And you gotta think if we have a hundred games on our site, every person that goes there is a hundred pulls. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at you're down to only a hundred pulls per day people for your free thousand yeah but that you the, the places that use this obviously pay for it and that yeah so i don't know so this is the other one everyone hates amazon right well if you hate amazon use our links because it takes three percent from amazon gives it to us a gamer i i don't get it I, it makes no sense to me why why is what i do any worse than what many other like it's, it's not even like sharing duck cleaning you know <laughs> I, like duck cleaning you don't need that unless you just like put up drywall you don't need your ducks clean i used to work in the industry <laughs> trust me you probably unless, don't need unless you've clean. had renovations you th there's very very small small chance you're gonna get any benefit yep. do change your filter though because that is why you don't need duck at least cleaning. once every six months yeah i think um, it's more often that isn't it? i don't know i change i think it's every, every quarter I, I i change it when nest tells me to nowadays yeah. Um, the net my nest app tells me i need to change uh, we we actually because we did a lot of service recently on our whole hvac ac yeah, yeah. heater we have people come out and check everything and they replace it when they come out now so there you go That's all right well so there is the, the uh there's the sausage making of a different sort for this episode yeah, without, this without, is... without giving away all all that sorry i don't want to give away the re the deals but like if people all knew this you could all do it yourself and then we'd make nothing <laughs> although at the same time very few people would be willing to take the effort yes. that it requires like the, 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 to the find the these return signals. on investment really it's it's probably not worth a lot it. of people have to buy stuff for this to become valuable yes. uh so i'm going to jump over to the discord where we had a question from dave uh, Dave asks me, actually, what can you tell us about your masks character? So my current masks character is using the bowl playbook and he goes by the name of Ultra Lad. He is your sort of prototypical jock dude, dude, bro, um, a senior in high school. And uh, his parents were actually villains who uh, experimented on him in childhood to give him his powers, uh, which are uh, an incredible strength and a uh, almost total invulnerability, at least of the torso. 
Um, so I can take the bullet ability of the torso. Okay. Just I can funny. I can take like, bullet I get hits. It, it makes yeah, yeah. sense. It just sounds funny. I can I can take bullet hits to the to the chest, but uh, it'll hurt if you start shooting me in the arms. Uh, and then I'm you know incredible super strength, and I can't fly, which was actually the 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 GM was actually like, really, you're gonna you're gonna pass on that? I'm like, yeah, I, I need to give myself a little a little work to do. So uh, I, I chose not to not to fly. Um, so that's uh, that's that's the the meat and potatoes of my masks character. Uh, this actually my next character is already queued up. Uh, came up this week. Uh, I'll be doing. One of the media darlings, I forget the actual name of the playbook, but they're basically a uh, an Instagram star sort of thing, or a, a star. Maybe it even is the star, uh, but they're they're a they're a popular character who who sort of vibes okay. on their uh, on media popularity, uh, and uh, I want their power to be an EMP so that you know when they're being recorded unnecessarily, <laughs> they can just wipe all the all the recording media in the area. Nice. So. Uh, and then All right. uh, I've got another question from Pax. I want to talk about. It. I'm just trying to find yeah. it. Yeah, here it is. Okay, I got to move this somewhere. I can read it a little better. Because I am trying to decide if we do this as a full show, and I'm thinking no. So the question: I recently listened to episode 58. What's the problem? From back September 2019. Uh, this was a freeform discussion of problematic content in games. I really enjoyed this break from the usual format where Mo and Sean explored their thoughts on this complicated topic in an open, unscripted conversation. Such a difficult topic in this format allowed for nuance and mixed feelings, which is exactly where most of us are in dealing with problematic stuff in our media. Hallelujah. Um, I wondered if you might be willing to revisit the topic now a couple of years later. Much has happened in 2020 and 2021 that affects what strikes people as problematic and how we respond to it. Um, Copaganda, for example, the glorification or valorization of the police is now something we're a lot more sensitive to. How gender identities are handled is another such topic. And now we're much more aware of problematic creators, such as those who support trans exclusionary radical feminists. Um, how has your experience evolved over the last couple of years? Recognize any emerging issues and handling the games that are affected by them. So my first thought when I read this is I don't think any of our advice would have changed. Not really, like, no. I don't think anything, like, yes, there are new topics and we are going to constantly be introduced to uh, thing, becoming more aware of what, content is problematic and what content creators are problematic but i just I, like i haven't re-listened to the episode but i'm just wondering how much we'd be able to add to that like yeah i, I, mean, I think it is worth bringing up again but i just can't like our overall result if i remember correctly from that episode was the important thing is to acknowledge it and to be talking about it and to sit down with your group and decide what content you will allow and not allow at your game and I don't think that's changed. Yeah, I mean, Lines and Veils, um, the concept of Lines and Veils and, and the X card don't change. The only thing that changes is what's listed in them. And so right. maybe now we have uh, police, you know, uh, you know or, or, or popular police or good guy police listed in our Lines and Veils chart where we didn't yes. before. Uh, and, you know, maybe J.K. Rowling is now listed in our, our Lines and Veils chart uh, or Harry Potter content as a result of her, the well, I think I think uh, we've already talked about that yeah, one yeah. quite a bit. And I mean, that's yes. you know, but all these new topics come up, but they are at this point able to be inserted into the existing safety tools and safety framework uh, that exists just naturally. But it just flows right into this framework that we have developed as an industry. Not Mo and I have not developed any of it. <laughs> Uh, I, actually, I made one for, for kids playing board games, but I never actually went anywhere with it. I created that, and I never actually put it out. That's actually still in my drafts. I I kind of forgot about that. I had made a, a stop sign for playing board games with kids. Right. And, well, with the family. But, yeah, so, again, the frameworks are there, uh, and when new problems arise and when new discoveries arise... Uh, they can be inserted into there. And that goes for problematic content creators, uh, authors, and, uh, you know, people who are, are outed. Uh, See, the, the only thing I don't think we address is if that comes up 
in the middle of playing a game. I think well, again, that'd be we the did only talk thing about, we could probably talk we did, about. We did talk about uh, revisiting session zero. Yes. Right? It's not it's not only session zero. It starts at session zero, but it needs to continue right. and be revisited. Yeah, like so, I said, that's what I was going to add is if you suddenly find out the game you are playing is published by someone who abused their staff, you may want to sit down with your group and say, hey, do we want to continue playing this? Now, in general, I think you probably don't have to stop playing what you're playing as long as you're having fun because you started playing with good intentions and didn't realize this. Now, the decision I would probably make at that point is, sure, we're going to keep playing, but we're no longer going to support that person. So after this campaign's done, we're done, or I'm no longer going to buy the new books or whatever for the game. Yeah, where, you know, look, we'll look for third party content that doesn't support yes. them, however you want to go about it. Uh, if you've already bought the books, you've already, exactly. they already have your money. There's, you know, maybe don't put, maybe don't post about it on social media or maybe choose not well, to make it an too, actual what play. You, what you do have to watch for, and this is something I'm finding difficult, is um, endorsing intentionally or unintentionally. Right. Like I, I'm trying to say, if I, if I sit down and play Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle with my kids, should I be sharing pictures on Instagram? And at this point, it's questionable. I mean, right now, it's weird because a lot of things are going ahead about Harry Potter because of the anniversary happening this year of 20 years since the movie release. Uh, but they are all, they are exclusively, they are excluding J.K. Rowling. Yes. Um, there is a TBS show uh, on Sundays. La last week was the first episode, and it is the Hogwarts House Battle. And it's a mm -hmm. game show hosted by Helen Mirren. Um, and they are very clearly putting their foot down with LGBTQ uh, T mm -hmm. plus contestants on this show. Right. Um, so, and, and they have not once mentioned in the first episode anyway, they did not once mention the author. Right. Um, and I know for instance, uh, HBO is putting on a, a big talk show with characters from the movie again, because this is, you know, 20th anniversary of the movie. And she was explicitly not invited right. uh, to the HBO pro uh, program. Mm -hmm. So there but are to choices. Be honest, being made. I don't know what the op is doing with JK Rowling anymore. Uh, well, as far absolutely. as that particular game is concerned. Absolutely there. I mean, you know, cause again, the, the potions expansion came out after we knew <laughs> yes. there was no, there really wasn't any question about her stance on things when that expansion came out. Yeah. Which I still haven't even recorded. Oh, I think we did do the unboxing. Then I think but I haven't done it. any more because of that. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, I, again, I just, I can't see writing up another blog post. I can't see doing a full topic. Like I think we just talked about some of the stuff. Yeah. Some of the new stuff that's come up since then. Um, I can't remember if black lives matter had happened, but the whole George Floyd and everything that came with that, the, uh, ACAB without saying it out loud. Um, in blue line there are definitely new issues and that's going to keep happening mm -hmm. and i think it's a great thing like I, uh, stuff like this is going to happen we're going to hear about broken token we're going to hear about ceos of activision we're going to hear about blizzard issues more people as more people come forward we're going to become more aware of this content and again i think the important thing is being aware of it talking about it and making an informed decision on what you do and don't want to support and how you support it and again, I'm not telling you, do support, don't, that's up to you. That's you and your group, your game night, you do you, but at least be aware that these things are happening. And, and I, another interesting thing that, that I think is worth talking about is, uh, again, when, when it comes to the revisiting, don't just revisit new things. Uh, for instance, mm. there was yet again a school shooting yesterday. Yep. Yep, um right across the river yeah real nearby um and this you know someone who reloaded their weapon so huh, and and this keeps happening is this something you know is there something you can do or you want to do in your games uh to minimize the importance of gun violence in a game right there are there are ways that you can can act and talk in your systems that you may wish to to go into a direction where gun violence is minimized and and you know mm -hmm. the the importance of a gun is minimized uh just to support the overall shift or potential shift or lack of shift whichever you want to call it in the in the view on what is happening in the world and that's something that that has been going on for ages 
and maybe at one point you decided it was okay, but you finally had enough. Yeah. And and that changes, right? So your lines and veils can change and don't be afraid to change them as you as a person mm. evolve. Yeah, that's something like like as the game starts, the, this is something we haven't really talked about, but it's like hour zero, right? Like <laughs> before your game starts, if something has happened in the media, in the world, something big happened and it's impacting you, let the other players know. Right. Like, like, uh, honestly, we're getting to that point. We, we, uh, session zero is becoming a little more mainstream and talking about your feelings and what you want from a game is becoming more mainstream, but I don't think, and, and I think it's going to keep evolving and maybe get to that point where, Hey, tonight, you know, there, this just happened, whatever. There's an outbreak at my kid's school. Can, you know, I know you've got the, the whole mutagen side plot going on. Can we, step off that for now can we do a side quest can we just do something else it's a little too close to home for tonight and normalizing that conversation before games i think is is a huge thing that that, that is going to keep changing and keep happening and yes there's going to be people out there saying what do i have to sign a consent form when i sit down at your table i'm like yes actually you do because we want everyone to have fun yep. not just you absolutely yeah or not I'm, just I'm, me i'm fine i'm fine with consent forms i'm okay with that essentially a line and veil uh, she is a consent form. Uh, yes. You know, we don't generally have them signed, but I got no problem putting a signature line on there. Um, not at all. <laughs> we yeah. actually, uh, we actually just got into some content into our uh, current masks game, where we started dealing with some drugs, um, superpower enhancing drugs, and we paused. And the DM took a, cool? took the DM took a minute and said, "Look, I just want to remind everyone." We've got the X card in here. This is great. You know, this we're going in this direction and things may, may become uncomfortable. I want to make sure that everyone is going to be okay here. Mm -hmm. uh, and I po and I piped up and said, uh, because of my involvement in the plot line, it's like, look, that doesn't mean that it's only you. If you see me doing something with an NPC that you're uncomfortable about, stop me. Don't mm -hmm. just stop you. Like, don't if it's don't just worry about your character worry about the story as a whole. So if I'm going too far for you, yeah. I still have to stop. <laughs> Just because I'm doing it doesn't mean you don't have to, you, you don't have the right to stop me. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and that's, you know, it, literally that was, you know, sent my, on Sunday, we had this conversation with the whole group and we've been playing for quite some time. <laughs> oh, and that's the kind of thing like I said, it should be normalized should happen more often. And then Math Guy Dave makes a good point. If they don't want to sign, I don't want to play with them. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, and sometimes it, it's still not necessarily easy to have those conversations, but it, it's becoming more and more normalized. Like, I, th I think anymore, if someone's like, ah, safety tools, they're now the odd person out. Like, most people have kind of realized the actual point of them is not to ruin your fun. I, and, and, and if you do think that, then again, I don't want to play with you. So, yeah. and there's plenty of people out there yeah. that will still play with you. Yeah, you you can go try to disturb each other all night, whatever. Yeah, that's whatever funny. you think you find fun. Yep. Uh, so, uh, speaking of Dave, actually, we got another question from the Discord from Dave. This one's for you. Okay. So, Aventuria is rated uh, seven point five, uh, with a weight of two point four on Board Game Geek. How close are your personal ratings of the game to those? Well, I gave it a nine on Board Game Geek. It's not perfect, but if I remember, Board Game Geek is always willing to play, will not turn down a game. I think is nine. I'm going to double check that because I don't remember off the top of my head. <laughs> As usual for AMAs, I don't like to cheat and use the internet, but I yeah, just I need to find <laughs> any game to rate. Uh, nine is excellent. Very much enjoy playing. Oh, so maybe it would be, what's a 10? Is 10 never turned it's, down again? Uh, outstanding. Uh, we'll always enjoy playing. Okay, no, I gave it a nine because there were bits that I didn't enjoy. Yep. I, I like the, 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 the minor quibble. It was just like, oh, I, that, why, why'd they do it that way? So I didn't always enjoy it 100% all the time. So that's why I gave it a nine. Right. Um, it, one of them actually says we'll never turn down. Maybe that's like an eight. I don't even remember anymore all the numbers. So uh, eight's the one I was like, eight is very good game. I like to play, probably I'll suggest it and will never turn down a game. Oh, interesting. Because when I hover over eight on the BGG, it says very good. Enjoy playing and would suggest. 
So there's they they have two different sets of ratings on their own. So it's, yes, number nine is excellent game, always want to play it. Whereas ten is outstanding, always want to play and expect this will never change. So BGG has two different versions of their own rating system, and they yeah, wonder would, why people don't follow it. I was just checking the mouse over of the actual stars, and it gives it. So what I did different. is, if on the, the when you look up a page rank and you can rate it, there's right. a little eye that if you mouse over the eye says, "Here's a list of recommended ratings." Oh, okay. And that's what I am using. Right. So yeah, it was the the always want to play and expect this will never change. I don't always want to play it, right? Like like I like it. I like it a lot. It's definitely an eight for me based on this one. Right. I'll never turn down a game as it, if I'm using their rating as kind of, it, it, I have turned down playing it. So I can't quite say that. Right. So, but I'm like, I'm like between eight and nine, probably. So to be honest, if I'm using their rating between seven and eight sounds right. Good game, usually willing to play. I'll suggest it, but I might turn it down now and then would be like a 7.5. So right. I got to say that that fits their rating for how I feel. But I personally rate more to the eights and nines. Like the, the word never to me is a little bit much. Right. Like I, I very seldom will turn down a game. I have to be like, I'm not I'm going to turn down a game because I need to review something else or because of that. Wait, I, again, uh, with uh, Race for the Galaxy being our 2.5, I would say it's lower well, than see, Race. Interestingly, Race right now is rated 2.99. Oh, it's jumped up. So that a shouldn't lot. be our median anymore. Race is now a 2.99. Oh, we're going to have to find a new medium. I game. know. What the heck? People are, people are finding it complicated with the newest printing, I guess. <laughs> it is a terrible game to teach. Well, there you go. Uh, let me see. So yeah, average, we'll have to find a new medium. Average, it's definitely yeah. simpler than Race for the Galaxy. They're, like, there's icons. But the icons. That is the one thing that does seem to trip players up, actually. The players seem to be tripped up by the icons. But once you play, once you get them. I'm talking about Aventuria, not Race yeah. of the Galaxy. The the lidless eye or the lit the the dark eye. I always want to call it the lidless eye, the Lord of the Rings thing, because that's what it reminds me of. Right. The dark eye symbol tends to confuse people. That's fate. And the other thing is now that we're playing some of the older adventures that were actually published for the first edition, they changed some of the icons. So the icon that is now two cross swords used to be the starburst. So that confuses players, which I didn't even it for some reason just kind of slipped past me because I was like I knew there was a second printing and that Forest and No Return right. and um Dip of Lost Souls were published for the old edition because of the glossy cards and the fact that like the characters have a wheel for one, but I totally missed the fact the icons had changed. So like we were playing a game with Tori and Cat where Tori wasn't doing something because he didn't think he had the symbol. Oh, okay. And here it was just the the generic put three tokens on a thing. Right, and they can be anything, so they change the way those tokens look. So interestingly, I'm just double checking here. Uh, the median game is yes. Legendary, a Marvel deck building game, Civil War. Why well, played Legendary? Because <laughs> uh, I get four games if I if I search for games that are rated high enough, like are, are rated well, yeah. uh, and are a two point five with at least ten people suggesting the weight. Um, because you, any higher than that, you lose it mm -hmm. because nobody suggests weight. And I get four games: Legendary Expansion, Civil War, Citrus from 2013. Never played that one. Uh, <laughs> Encircle the fin uh, Ficas. Um, Unlock Mystery Adventures, Tony Powell's Treasure, and I played a single. Exit unlock. the game, Sinister Mansion. No, that wasn't the one we played. Is that? No, you did no. not do Sinister Mansion. I'm like, I don't think we played that exit game. <laughs> so I'm exit like, games like I'm putting a weight on exit games is hard. Puzzles all depend on the people doing them. Yeah, puzzles are so hard to rate a difficulty. So oh, math yeah. guy Dave said he asked it because he thinks it might be our game of the year. The thing is, we discovered Adventuria last year. Yeah, like it isn't new to 2021 for us. True. We started playing it last year, and I think I might have put it on our best games of 2020. That is an episode we did. I don't right. remember what we said were our best games of 2020. <laughs> yeah, definitely have to do some research before we do that again. Yeah, I would, uh, <laughs> I would have to do some research on that. But yeah, Adventure is really good. We've definitely been enjoying it. Um, I've enjoyed playing it four and five players. Deanna enjoy it. And I enjoy it as a date night game. One of the things that I, it clicked in that is so good about that game is the almost complete lack of quarterbacking. Because you were so focused on your own thing in your own deck. And it's not a matter of, I know what your character does. Even if it was, it's like, whatever you, I don't know what you have in your hands. And I don't know that. Like, maybe it's like, oh, you should go try to take the test. But like, it, 
I've never had a turn where it was like, you know what you should do this turn? Use this, then use this, then use that, then do this and make this roll. Like, yes, now and then we're like, wait, no, no, no. Use your thing that might miss first. So you earn some fate. But like, that's just more tactics and strategy talk, not taking another player's turn for them. Okay. So that part's really good. Um, that roller coaster is so well done. The, 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 oh my God, how are we yeah. going to win? Look at all these henchmen. There's no way. And then playing like, oh, no, we're doomed. We're absolutely, look, I'm already down to 10 health. So wait, wait, no, we might be, you know what? I got some healing cards. Now that I have armor out, we might be okay to, oh, no, no. Oh, geez, if our time runs out and then you win. Like that happens so often with that game. But we have won, lost a couple now. So it's, and, and it is, so it has happened. I, I, I dig it. I, I like adventure a lot. I think it is one of the best adventure card games i've played i'm definitely enjoying it more than the warhammer one which is surprising because the warhammer one I, to be honest if warhammer kept going if it wasn't killed after one box set maybe i'd get more into it it's more similar to that i'm enjoying it way more than the pathfinder one even though i was having fun with the pathfinder one um and honestly i think i'm enjoying it more than say descent or gloomhaven like, it's not a dungeon crawler, but it scratches that same itch. The same, I'm playing a character, I'm fighting monsters, I'm having adventures. No, I'm not putting miniatures out on a map, but it's scratching that same almost RPG itch in a better way. So I honestly think that I'm enjoying Aventuria more than most dungeon crawlers. Yeah, I, I think it was this year. Um... Was it this year? I've, See, that's a quarantine time. I have I know, no idea. I, I know. It took us that long to get to it. Like, I remember getting the pile of stuff. When was that? Well, and then I'm just trying to find our, so our unboxing of Aventuria was March. Wow. Okay. So maybe it is this year. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I think uh, it is. It is. It might be game of the year. There you go. Oh, so I hate it. having a game of the first time we played. Oh, that's now. Was the fifth month in May. Yeah. May so, was yeah, our first play. Unboxed it in March and, and played it in May. Wow. All right. I just have no clue what year it is. <laughs> Quarantine. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Maybe it is from there. It feels like it was from last year. <laughs> it really feels like it was from last year. Well, I wonder when all that stuff showed up. Probably February. Yeah. We'd have it on an after show somewhere. Somewhere when we unbox the giant pile <laughs> of stuff. Yeah. giant box speaking of which there's unboxings for later tonight if you stick around i know what one of them is well i don't actually i know where one of them came from <laughs> is a better way to put it but yeah inventory is really good like i more people should play it we should show math guy dave how to well, play it unfortunately we need to get it out to the like we need the quarantine oh, and you know next. pandemic <laughs> over to get it out to people because not being able to buy it is probably yes uh no i was gonna say we should show math guy dave on tabletop simulator because mm -hmm. the tabletop simulator version is really good it just that it only has one story yeah that's, that's the, the problem. problem and actually we haven't checked there could be more now who knows maybe they've added more. Uh, not it. according to their website oh you you can play the the druid from yeah something. they added the druid they added the druid from force no return but they didn't add the stories which is not just the book right you need those cards out and you need right. the henchmen and you need like it's more than because at first I was like, I'll just use that and run it. But the only thing you'd be able to do is do your deck. Yeah. Everything else I'd have to somehow do here with air with I don't know down cameras. And <laughs> I could probably do it because I think that mat would fit on this table with the down air. We could probably do it, but in general, there's probably better things we can play <laughs> online that work better. There you go. Yeah, the biggest problem is getting the game, and and that's I I don't know I don't know what to tell you. That's it's been a problem. <laughs> Indeed. I, I this is the problem with us putting out. I've almost kind of decided to hold off on more Aventuria content because like no one can buy this stuff. And I get people writing me saying, How do I get this? I'm like, I don't know. I sorry, we 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 didn't. So know I just went to the publisher and they don't have anything. Yeah. Like and so we're like, not we're not new hotness. We are pre-new hotness. Yeah. Because you can't get the hotness. <laughs> no, like it's not even here. Yeah. So, so the the North American retailer, not even on their website anymore. So I don't know if if, if they're changing who's publishing their stuff in North uh -huh. America. Like I'm on all products, newest to oldest, and it's not even here. Surprise. So, I I don't know. I I reach out to Eric Simon again and say, hey, how do people buy your game? 
Alrighty. Well, I think we've had a good run of questions. We we did some deep dives on this stuff. We didn't oh, do a bunch of good. tiny little this ones. Was... I think this was a healthy uh, a healthy discussion on all sorts of stuff. Uh, and if uh, people want to go check over check out Dyson Logos on Twitter, he posted his art for the ammo theme today. Nice. Yeah, that'd be worth checking out. So the last update was February 18th this year. It's the last time Ulysses Spiel has put out anything about Aventuria. And it was the release of the Magister of Alchemy on Tabletop Simulator. <laughs> like, that's it. That's the last update, February. Wow. Like, there, there's just nothing. There's... I don't know. I, I, I have the games. They'll be out there sometime. Yep. The, the only thing good about this is anytime you search anything, I've been sure on the internet, we come, we come up, up. Yeah, yeah. which is kind of nice. Like we're, we're in the perfect SEO position. So if this game ever explodes, we're, we're going to be the experts on this game. Yep. But yeah, it's, it's good. It's, it's an extremely solid game. Deanna has been really enjoying it. This is this, it's become our date night game of choice. You'll notice we haven't been playing the Duke and patchwork and stuff recently. We tend to sit down and play some Aventuria if we're not trying to learn something new from the pile of obligation. Um, we honestly still have to go back and finish Forest No Return because we failed on that last mission. We still haven't done that. I just the, the sales were ridiculous. They took up way too much of our time. Yeah, for some reason I, I didn't remember it being this bad last year, or maybe we were more lax about how much time we spent and like actually enjoyed life a bit in between. <laughs> So I know we slept more this year, like leading up to the big days. We we did more sleeping in than than before, going like, you know what, and there's no big sales launch. We're gonna sleep in and then put out some stuff and then kind of work on stuff. But once we hit the, the big days. So the, there's your other big secret is um sleep. Sleep, yeah. No, uh going back to Pax's question, here here here's your biggest tip for Amazon is the sales go live at midnight, wherever the heck they are, which I think is central or Pacific which is 3 a.m. Eastern. Right. So if you really want to be get there and get the hottest deals, you need to check. And and there's a little bit more to it than that that I won't share, but it's the whole early bird gets the worm thing, which we normally do not do on a regular basis. Uh, now, we do have a way to check what's coming up, and we tend to know if it's worth getting up at 3 a.m. ahead of time. But that I'll leave you to discover on your own. Remember, when it's not the holidays, we like to spend this segment answering one of your game or game night questions. We usually deep dive a question instead of kind of scratching the surface on a bunch of different things. But we did get kind of deep tonight. Now, if you do have a game or game night question for us, all you got to do is head over to the website, click on the words, ask the bellhop, the top of the page, or email questions at tabletopbellhop.com. 